Hello once again, John Flynn here from Flynn Real Estate serving Southern Ontario based out of the Niagara region. Thank you once again for tuning in and watching. This week, I'm going to get to some of the areas I missed from last week uh, across Canada, some of the regions. They'll be at the end just because I did have some requests and whatnot. I'm going to get to the latest national statistics just released today and go over those quickly. But first, I want to start with some words from our new housing minister and just some promises or I don't know if they're promises, but some statements he's made. And it kind of seems like uh, the best of both worlds for both the potential buyers and the existing homeowners. So let's look into this and I'll give you my thoughts on it. This is from BNN Bloomberg. This was from August 10th. Canada wants to make homes affordable without crushing prices. In a country with some of the world's most expensive real estate, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government wants housing to become more affordable. But Canada's new housing czar has a message of reassurance for the nation's homeowners. It doesn't want to drive down prices. Our goal is not to decrease the value of their home, Housing Minister Sean Fraser said in his first interview with Bloomberg News since he took the job on July 26th. Our goal is to build more units that are at a price that other people who don't currently have their needs met can afford. So kind of the best of both worlds. The, the last statement was a little bit wishy-washy, who don't currently have their needs met, uh, can afford. I don't know. Like it's not, he's not saying like we're going to have ha cheap house prices for them. He's just, you know, coming up with some solution or suggesting some solution, but there's no details on it. Maybe it's the Canadian math system. I know that we don't score the greatest points. Maybe that's affecting his judgment. I don't know. But uh, it'd be very interesting to see what kind of a solution he has for uh, this situation. Again, we have a housing crisis and we have people that don't want to lose value on their homes. But let's look at kind of the track record and what's happening now when it comes to home prices and new construction and whatnot. So released already this year from CMHC was lower house prices and less supply projected for 2023. And they're very specific in this article with one of their points made. We project housing starts to decrease in 2023 and remain well below recent levels. Another recent article here from CMP. All the links for these are in the description. Canada housing starts likely to remain sluggish, suggests CHBA chief. One more article touching on the construction. Canada is losing tens of thousands of construction jobs. This was just released on August 10th, this article. In construction, employment decreased by 45,000 in July, following a smaller decline of 14,000 in June. Since January 2023, employment in construction decreased by 71,000 jobs. So now we have less homes being started or constructed, less people working in the industry, at a time when we actually need more homes with the government's, you know, million people per year agenda of bringing in, uh, of growing the population. And now lastly, on this subject, I compiled the data using right from Stats Canada using their data on the previous government and the current government and the projected uh, current government's track record when it comes to housing and immigration or housing and population, I guess you could say. Now, I took the names out of this chart as to not offend anyone or to set anybody off. Of course, it's clearly visible who these people are, or who the governments are, but naming people or, or parties or whatever, it kind of you know sets people off. But let's look at the data here. So at the top, very clear, we have years in government. So under the previous government, the population grew by 3.4 million people in the last uh, 10 years or in their 10-year term. And so far under the present government, at about 7.66 years, this data is current up until the end of June 2023. So again, 7.66 years, just over 4 million people. And of course, you get into the projected, uh, they're looking about uh, 6.2, 6.3 million if they last the full term in office until 2025. Breaking that down to population growth per year, 350,000 per year. Uh, from the previous government, 526,000 per year at the present government, and it will be up to 633,000 or so if they meet their targets and last the full term. And you can see the housing completions there, 1.8, almost 1.9 million, just over 1.5 million, uh, shorter term so far, and the housing completions per year. So the present government has actually completed more homes per year. 
uh, than the previous government. Now they have had more population increase, but uh, they haven't fallen behind, I guess, from the last government. And again, we'll project that at about 200,000 per year if they last almost 10 years, because I would hope they would increase some sort of construction at some point, but uh, we will see. So I've given them credit for 200,000 per year if they last the 10 years or almost 10 years. The second last column here is housing completions required to serve the population during their term. And this is at 2.5 people per household, which is just about the average in Canada. And you can see the previous government needed 1.37 million. This government needed 1.6 million so far and will need 2.5 million if they meet their goals. So the last column is pretty self-explanatory based on all these numbers. This is the surplus or deficit in homes or completions uh, under their terms. So the last government had just under 500,000 surplus homes compared with this government so far up until the end of June 2023 down just under 100,000 homes for what they've done with the population and the construction. And of course, if they do make it full term, they'll be down over 500,000 homes at their current rate of construction and population growth. Now, I have got comments. I made a video about a year ago saying that we've had enough homes up until that point. Yes, we did. We had enough homes under construction uh, based. Obviously, now we're looking, breaking it down into different governments. There was a surplus from the last government. So even though this government has fallen behind, there is still that surplus that would have carried over. Now, going forward, we're going to have a deficit of some kind. Uh, we'll see how much, but these are just projections. But as for right now, the current government is behind 100,000 or so units. And luckily, there was a surplus from the previous government. So anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting to point that out as people and governments are pointing fingers at each other. Those are the raw data. They're right from Stats Canada. The links are on the bottom of that sheet. I'll actually put them in the description also. You can look it up yourself. These are unbiased. I try to make it as uh, you know unbiased or less biased as possible. But uh, again, links are in the description. So you can you know question it and analyze it yourself. Now, moving on to the national statistics just released today, the same day that the CPI just went back up to 3.3%, a lot of action today, a lot of activity to talk about. I'm not going to talk about the CPI. Uh, it is what it is, but let's look at the national statistics. Canadian home sales see little change from June to July. And I am going to read the highlights this month instead of reading their line for line in the news release. National home sales edged down 0.7% month over month in July. So again, not much change there. Actual monthly activity came in 8.7% above July 2022. The number of newly listed properties rose 5.6% month over month. The MLS home price index climbed 1.1% month over month and was down just 1.5% year over year. The actual national average sale price posted a 6.3% year-over-year increase in July. So there's lots of month-over-month -month data here until you get to the average price, which always bothers me. I think that we should have that. We have other month-over-month. -month. We have the sales. We have the new listings. But uh, of course, they don't want to alarm people with month-over-month changes, whether it's going up or going down. And, uh, and of course, I do this regularly every month on this. So I do have that data after I get into just a couple of comments from the economists that work there. July continued along the same trend we've seen emerge in recent months, with sales leveling off and new listings returning to more normal numbers, said Larry Chirkwa, chair of Korea. This has been giving buyers more choice and balancing the market which as of July was also slowing the rate of price growth. So supply has come back online and price growth has slowed down or stopped or reversed, depending on how you look at it. Following a brief surge of activity in April, housing markets have settled down in recent months, with price growth now also moderating with its usual slight lag, said Sean Cathcart, Korea's senior economist. Sales and price growth are already showing signs of tapering off further in August in response to the Bank of Canada's mid-July rate hike and messaging regarding above-target inflation for longer than previously expected. We're probably looking at another round of back-to-the-sidelines for some buyers until there's a higher level of certainty around interest rates going forward. So yeah, I think that was a well-put comment or a well-written comment. So looking at the charts they provide, the sales activity for July was pretty average. 
New listings have increased dramatically over Q1 and seem to be pretty average or in that average range now, as they suggested. The market balance is very interesting here. So we've seen the sales to new listing ratio decrease dramatically. So it went from this strong seller's market to more of a balanced market now. It's around 59%. The long-term average is 55%. So we're getting back to that average or that balanced market. Once it dips or if it does dip below that, it will get into buyer market territory. I don't know if it's going to make it there, but uh, it is dramatically decreasing, meaning, again, it is more of a balanced market. The months of supply in the blue bars there hasn't increased dramatically, but it is up just a little bit month over month. And here is the average price point comparing it to the HPI index. And you can see they've actually diverged. You know, the index is going up and the average price is going way down. So it just kind of shows you that the HPI is a lagging indicator. You know, it goes up uh, at the same month, the average price is going down. So that's why I don't like to use it. It's not current or current enough. It's, it's blending months of data. And again, I don't even know where the formula is, but I like average. It's very simple. It gives you real-time data from month to month to see exactly what the market's doing. And it's very important, I think, for buyers to know that because you can save, you know, 50 to 100 grand uh, in a month or two uh, depending on what the market's doing. So again, like the average price point and not the HPI so much. Putting that data into my own charts now, average prices in Canada have dropped 5.8% month over month or $41,000, pretty significant drop there. They are up 6.2% year over year in July from last year or $39,000. And we're down 18.1% from the peak or $148,000. And we're quickly approaching that 20% mark again. I think we're going to make it there. We'll see what the fall has to offer, but uh, we might reach it just in August alone. And of course, the fall is going to be an interesting time. And again, the same data, but in a line chart. And that head and shoulders is looking very pronounced now. You know, people say, oh, you can't use these trading statistics or trading patterns on real estate well every month it just looks more and more realistic and it fits the pattern like that's wow it's it's pretty perfect that head and shoulders and one more thing i just wanted to point out on the average prices we had that 5.8 percent drop and the data that i have compiled it goes back to what october 2016 so this is the fourth largest price drop month over month price drop i should say since October 2016, uh, the only other times were when the pandemic started in April 2020. And of course, last year when prices were in free fall after the interest rates uh, announcement started. Okay, now on to any of those places I missed last week. The data wasn't ready. So here they are. These are the month over month price changes from June to July. I put an equals in there for some reason instead of a dash. But anyway, you know what I mean? Chilliwack and District, wow, over 10%, closer to 11% they dropped in one month. Renfrew County, over 5%, like 6 7% there. Chatham-Kent, someone asked about that. They're down about 6% in one month. Then less than 5%, Greater Moncton and New Brunswick, Sudbury, Nova Scotia. Minor losses in the interior BC, Okanagan. And we did have some price changes in northern BC and over 5 almost 6% in Newfoundland and Labrador. Looking from the peak, Chatham-Kent down 22-23% from the peak. Chilliwack and District down 22% or so from the peak. Renfrew, 13%. Sudbury, Okanagan, Nova Scotia, Greater Moncton between 5 and 10%. And then just minor losses from the peak in northern BC and Newfoundland and Labrador. Translating that into dollar losses or dollar changes, Chilliwack and District just under 200,000 loss from the peak. Chatham-Kent, 120,000 or so from the peak. And the rest you can go down there and see with Newfoundland and Labrador and northern BC really not losing much, pretty even. Looking at new listings from year over year from July last year, Chatham-Kent, again, leading the way with what, over 15%, 16%. Not huge losses or decrease in listings from last year. We've seen many in the 30, 40, 50% range in some areas. So this is nothing significant, even though they look like big numbers or big bars on the chart here. 
And of course, here are the sales year over year. We have some losses there at the top in Moncton, Newfoundland, Labrador, Chatham, Kent, Nova Scotia. Not a big difference. Sales can fluctuate with the number of sales. There's like two, 300 sales in a lot of these places. So just a few sales will make a difference. But Chilliwack and District, look at them. They're what, 60% more sales than they had last year, or even more, like 65% or something. Okay, so that's it for this week. Thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end. And until next time, I'll see you then.